It doesn't matter how old you are, where you're from, or what you do. Music is this incredible force that unites us all. The choice is yours to make, so live life and conquer. Music is about storytelling. Tell me the price you'll pay. It communicates where we've been in the past and where we dream to go in the future. There's no turning back, we've come too far. I'll sacrifice to win it all. A good song has the power to bring together cultures and move generations. We live in a city of flames and it's burning down. The people sing, the people sing. When I think about the work that we do, it truly is more than just selling technology. It's about connecting what moves the world. My name is Sho Sato. I'm a founder of the Hosa Technology. I was born in November 27, 1943, in Yokohama, Japan. Our family was very poor, all living in one tiny room, which was uh, provided by my father's factory. And we had to share that one roof, nine other families. It was just right after the Second World War. It was terrible. Just like many other Japanese families during that time, he grew up in poverty. He comes from a family of four siblings and they lived in small quarters. Didn't have a bathroom, they'd have to go to the public bathhouses to take showers. And that's really, I think, where his motivation and ambition came to be successful. He's the youngest of four, and it was just that burning desire, determination to find a better life for himself than, than the one that was given to him. Our father used to work a factory making springs for the automobile. And my mother was a professional kimono maker. They both are very hard worker. After I graduated high school, my family could not afford to send me to college. So I applied to a job at the naval station in Yokosuka, Japan, because I wanted to learn English. My job required to repair the audio equipment, so I had to learn how to read the electronic schematic. The best way he thought that he could learn English is to work on the military base. So in order to succeed at working that hi-fi counter, he went to night school to learn electronics because frankly, his job was to fix tape recorders and he had no clue how to do that. And one day, I met the uh, service manager from a company called TIA Corporation. He suggested I should work for TIAC. Six months after my dad was hired at TIAC, he got the once in a lifetime chance of coming to the United States. He was one of five people that were chosen to come to the U.S. to start the U.S. branch out in Santa Monica. His hard work and good work ethic, along with knowing how to speak English and just his drive, he honed in on his craft, he became a good technician, and the rest is history. I came to the United States when I was 25 years old, and that was really more like a, my dream come true. What inspires me about Sho's story is that, to me, he embodies the American dream. As an immigrant coming to the U.S. all alone, with only a little bit of money in his pocket, and looking to find your path and making a success of yourself through your own hard work and determination. 
One of the biggest lessons that I learned from show is positivity. And when you hear show speaking, you realize that you could be a good person, you could have a good soul, you could be positive and help others along the way while you're also striving to, to reach your own goals. After working at TX so many years, I felt I don't have anything to learn from this company. Then I decided to establish my own company. He'd been working at TIAC for about 17 years now. And, you know, he can see the writing on the wall. His career was kind of hit a plateau at TIAC, and, and he knew that there was not much more growth for him there. And so he took that opportunity to start his own business, and that's how Hosa started. I had a four investors that helped me to start my company. They each invested $1,000. The Hosa name came from the first initial of the last name of the four investors. And I didn't have uh, enough capital, so I started distributing audio video accessories. Those are much cheaper than an actual audio electronics unit. When my dad first started Hosa, he was definitely a one-man show. He started with a borrowed desk and a borrowed telephone and started making calls to different retail customers. He traveled across country, basically knocking door-to-door -to, -door to different retailers, taking orders. Then he'd come home, he'd invoice it himself, he'd pick, pack, and ship it all by himself until the business was up and running and he was able to hire more people. Hosa started in 1984. They hired reps around 1986. All the cables at that time were kind of junky. There was a couple companies that made decent cables, but they specialized into the hi-fi market. So when he came in, he had a high-quality cable of types that everybody wanted with a lifetime guarantee. And as soon as that was mentioned, people bought. The show was a very unassuming, very low pressure, very, very friendly, and people took to him instantly. Persistence, I think, is important for any entrepreneur. You're going to be challenged, you're going to have obstacles, but if you're persistent, then you can work through those challenges. And I think that it defines him because he's shared how hard he worked in the beginning in getting those customers, getting those reps. He believed in his own product, and he was persistent in getting his first dealer accounts and you know, making those connections. He made those happen. You're going to hear lots of no's in any endeavor. A lot of resellers that are going to tell us that they don't want our product and we have to continue knocking on the next door. And it doesn't matter how many people tell you, no, we're not interested, you have to continue. The only way that you're gonna find success is if you go beyond where everyone else is willing to go. first defining moments in Hosa was when he got his first large order and that was with Guitar Center. And at the time, it wasn't common for American companies to go overseas. There wasn't a big global trade at the time, it was just starting. So he was truly one of the pioneers to go to Asia overseas factories and manufacture products at a less expensive price. And so when Guitar Center saw the comparison between what it would cost them to purchase my dad's products versus what their other manufacturers were selling, it was really a, a no-brainer for them. And that really helped the trajectory of, of the company grow relatively quickly. show really valued the customer. Customer appreciation was very important because many times he regarded Hosa, we make cables and accessories, and he would oftentimes say, anyone, anyone can sell audio cables. So he really instilled how important it was to value the customer, to communicate with the customer, to make the customer happy. 
being proactive and making the customer trust us. In the beginning, the product line consisted of MIDI cables, RCF cables, guitar cables, and some adapters and some Y adapter cables. And nobody had anything to, to uh, do for patch bays. They were the, one of the first ones to come out with a short patch bay cable, because otherwise you had you know, six foot cables all sprawl all over the place. They had a nice, neat little six inch, 12 inch, eight inch. And I think some of the people that actually worked at Hosa were influential because they were also musicians and, uh, and recordists and said, I wish I had this, I wish I could get this. The first price list we had was three pages. Now it's a, a 140, 50 page book. They make a great product, so revenue-wise, they grow, they get bigger. That's not so surprising. How they go about doing it is very interesting because they see what's coming down the market in terms of products, electronics, recorders, whatever it might be, and they have this ability to build it. And by the time these other technologies emerge, and all of a sudden I go, hey, I need a three-prong thing with a blah, blah, blah. They go, yeah, it's on page nine. Thank you. Seeing Hosa grow over the years has been one of the most exciting parts of this journey. When I was representing them back in 2004, their product portfolio was not near the size that it is today. They had little forays into different areas of the industry where they tried to sell some different products, but ultimately got back to their core, which was cables. In order to stay relevant in this industry, you have to continuously innovate, reinvent yourself, and all these different connectivity solutions came into the market and HOSA has grown along with those new options. They've done a phenomenal job with marketing, staying ahead of the competition, and you know, at the end of the day, it's a cable. They just keep coming up with more solutions that we as musicians need. I think it's very cool that Hosa products are in almost every recording studio. It's used for live entertainment. They're in almost every retail, musical instrument retailer across the country and around the world. You can see just where I stand. You know exactly who I am. Taking everything I want. Don't believe me, then just watch. Standing like the earth is mine. Moving like I own this time. After 25 years uh, running my business, I wanted to leave my company to my family. And I felt so proud that Miami take over my business. When it was time for my dad to retire, it was really my mom who was the catalyst for pushing me and encouraging me to take over the family business. It was a big leap for me. I was afraid I wasn't gonna succeed. I think my biggest fear was coming in and getting the respect of the employees because I don't have that background and I am the owner's daughter. I, I, I felt I had big shoes to fill and it was a challenge that I was willing to take. Doing mortgage banking for 13 years, I can do it in my sleep. I learned how to manage people, looked at different ways of improving processes. And some of the biggest initiatives that I think I brought to HOSA was looking at the structure and the policies and procedures and kind of enhancing on that. Finding ways to be more efficient so that we can get products out the door quicker. When show retired and Mayumi was brought in, we all were, I would say, a little bit concerned about the situation, you know, but at the same time we were relieved because we knew that the alternative was basically the, the company being sold. We knew that we would lose the family feel should that ever happen. So Mayumi coming in was the perfect segue, I would say, because she learned all of the various facets of the company. We knew that she was always available, she was always right there for us, and we knew we were in good hands from the very beginning. She was completely open, just like Sho was. The transparency of the company didn't change. What I admire most about Mayumi as a leader is her dedication. 
She is always seeking opportunities, possibilities, solutions. I really admire her work ethic. First one in, last one to leave. She's always accessible, always available, and she cares. She cares about people, she cares about the family, she cares about the communities. And I admire her, I look up to her, the way she handles everything day to day, making the changes that she's made, it took some courage. I believe it was our first inventory that I uh, managed at Hosa Technology, and she was out there, put on her gloves, Carlos, where do you want me? Where do you want me to go and count? I'm here to help. That to me is amazing. What sets HOSA apart from the competition is the people. We care about our employees, we care about our customers, down to our suppliers and vendors. They're all a part of the HOSA community and we want to treat them the way we'd like to be treated. And what I'm most proud of is the longevity of the employees that have been there. Our average tenured employees is about 10 years, and we have employees that have been with us for 25 years or more, and our longest standing employees have been with us for 34 years. So I think the atmosphere that my dad promoted, you know, he's a kind and compassionate leader, and I think that flows through to the employees, and they're all truly hardworking, passionate about working at HOSA, and they're truly dedicated, and I can ask for a better team to work with. I feel very blessed, my family's blessed, my employees are blessed, and giving back to the community was something that was very important to me, and I wanted it to be also a way for us to build as a team and, and do things outside of just working with each other. So we determined that children and music were really two very important things in a lot of our lives. And so we've looked for ways, how, how can we support music? How can we support children? And those are the types of organizations that we've partnered with. Miami has made it a point for us to, as a company, participate in charities, and I've always given back when I can to family, friends, whatnot, children, and I think as a musician, it's very important to, to be a part of the next generation's life. Not only to carry on the passion for music, but also to simply connect. As a person of faith, I do believe that helping other people really makes you feel happy and that like you're like fulfilled because you know the fact that you have helped people, you made them really happy. We do charity works like giving them a scholarship like that. So I was really glad when you may, you know, incorporated that with our company. HOSA's core values are passion, drive, community, responsibility, and resilience. And I truly believe that those are the core values my dad had at the beginning. That's how he started the company. And it really resonates throughout our organization still today. And that's how we make our everyday decisions. Connecting what moves the world is about can the musician reach his audience or her audience. When I started, it was a kind of a very literal slogan. And what we wanted to do was show people how it's just much more than the product that we make. It's about who we are. It's about the family that you join when you, when you purchase HOSA products, because we're always there for you. We stand behind our product. Everyone is creative in their own way, and if we can help you some minute way, I think we've done what we wanted to do all along. Music moves me, and to be a part of everyone else's journey, a part of their dream, and to be able to help make that happen with our products is particularly moving to me as a musician. Success is waiting for you. You have unlimited potential, but you must be willing to work hard. We live in a city of flames and it's burning down. The people sing, the people sing. With persistence and determination, you can accomplish anything. This is the chance of a lifetime, a risk I'm willing to take. I lay it out all on the line. Tomorrow's not promised anyway. For the sake of my own side, I'll take that leap of faith. Father's 
college journey, what I'm most proud of is his resilience. He came from a really poor family and he was determined to have a better life for himself. Coming to America, learning English, starting his own company, it really truly is the American dream and he's succeeded at that and I couldn't be more proud to call him my dad.